Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Wired Nerdy Podcast. This is episode number 18 of season number two. My name is Keith, and I am joined here by what I call you, Puff Dougie. <laughs> I got some puffy hair this morning. I just woke up a couple minutes ago. So. He's got the bed head. You notice I'm if I'm wearing a hat, guys, it's probably because um, Doug picked a time where my hair is going to be all messed up, like early yeah, morning. You know. But he didn't care. Early bird he, gets the worm, right? Dude, you've got this this really cool like pompadour thing going on in the yeah, front. You look like uh, a you look like a jacked up Fallout character design. Uh, <laughs> you know, I only half made my character and then I woke up. His hair. He looks like on a punk. You need to, if you maybe make it purple. You'd. Uh... Well, I've got a bad line here that I'm worried about that when I go. You slept pray. hard. You slept oh, hard. Right in the face. It's that it's that CPAP machine, man. It is. It works amazing. <laughs> it knocks you out. Anyway, how's everyone doing? Uh, episode number 18. This is great. We've got some good ones for you here. Uh, so we'll standard. We're going to do some nerd news, and then we're going to talk about uh, the upcoming films for this particular summer. I know we're yeah. kind of on the edge of that. Uh, actually, we, we really are into summer now, aren't we? Now it's getting kind of hot. Yeah, you know, the summer is an exciting time for some new product releases, but it's really exciting to try to keep your attention in the movies. You know, everybody's camping, going on vacation stuff. So the movie industry, I think, really has to put out some really big titles to catch your attention to bring you back a little bit. So it's exciting to see what they release. Well, it's really tough. I mean, we've talked about this before and that. Movies have not rebounded since COVID, and the hard thing is, is with budgets for big budget getting larger and larger and larger, it's really difficult for them to make money back. Um, on, I mean, if you got a film, I was reading recently about uh, the Superman movie, as you know, yeah. rabid Superman man, fan. Um, it's going to be like three hundred million dollar budget. Now, the oh, problem geez. with that yeah. is, it, they're saying if you're above two hundred and fifty million. With what the theaters cut take and with what the rate of people going to the theater, it will fail. It, yeah. it just, it, it's just math. Yeah. It, it, will, it will most likely not make its money back. We're getting to that weird point because theaters are struggling so much that these, you know, the movies that we're seeing are just, they're not able to make, make money. Now, there are exceptions. You know, you have things like Pixar films and kids movies because that has a wider general audience. But it's really, we're at an inflection point. Uh, on all this, um, and I love going to the movie theater. Like we talked about, it's it's great, but it's slowly dying out. Um, and I also love streaming. So it's it's tough. You and I have talked about this before. We can get into it a little bit later on too. Yeah, you know, <laughs> just to add on to that, uh, I'm so worried about movie theaters because that's kind of the last. Uh, you know, I hate to say retro, but we are getting old. The last kind of <laughs> retro thing that I love, the thing that I love going to do. There's something about going to the movie, seeing it on a big screen. Uh, with your friends, your family, uh, girlfriend, whatever. But then you have to have some popcorn. You have to have a little soda. That's all part of the experience. I just don't want to lose that. But I see that it costs a lot of money to put it out in theaters. And then popcorn and all that. So crazy. So It is. But that's why we want to promote people going to the movies. Because it's still pretty Absolutely. cool. Yeah. And we'll talk about all a little bit. But before we dive in too deep. Because we have a tendency to go down tangents. Uh, oh, yeah. Big time. <laughs> let's queue up the nerd news. Are you ready, big guy? Oh, let's do it. Nerd News. All right. I'm going to get the share up here. We have some good right. stuff on yeah. this news. Like, even stuff I, that Doug found. I was like, wow, he really. I'm always worried. And then at the last minute, I find these articles. It's like, yep, we got the show. We're good to go. Exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> so let me get these bad boys up here. So, yeah, the first one I believe you're going to start with, Amazon is working on a new AI-powered uh, Alexa that might actually cost you per month. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that, but they are working on that. They're working on uh, behind-the-scenes stuff to make it uh, smarter, better at uh, follow-up questions, follow-up conversations. The price right now that they're proposing is anywhere from 5 to $10 a month on top of your Prime membership. Now, if you know, your Prime membership has already gone up the last couple of years. And I don't know that uh, this is worth it, an extra 5 to $10 for Alexa. I have so many thoughts. So and here's Alexa might be hearing me in the other room, but the only she thing I be. use her for is to turn on some lamps because I've got some, uh, whatever you call it, those wireless access uh, oh, yeah. plugs for my the lamps. Smart, the smart, smart plugs. Pl yep, thank you. It's too early in the morning. I know. So I use her to turn on lamps and then just ask the weather and stuff. Not a lot of conversation. Yeah. So 
This is tough for me because I'm heavy. We're heavy users of Alexa in our home. And we have one in each room. I've talked about it before. And a lot of people go, oh, my God, they're listening to you. And Doug and I have talked about it. I've got nothing to hide. Let them listen. I am more than happy to train them. That's fine. Um, it's immensely helpful in our lives. Now, <clears throat> you know, obviously, we don't have um, the devices that have cameras in our room. Um, and for I think I have one that has a camera. And at that, they have the really cool handy dandy. And you can kind of see it on the photo there, uh, a switch that actually covers you know, the Perfect. camera. Um, we have one that's like that. Um, but <clears throat> I, I love their platform. I think it's great. I've always liked Alexa in that. I think it's better than Siri because why? It's trained on more data. Um, my entire house is is automated in that I can turn almost any electric device on. Um, there's only two fronts that I refuse to go to, believe it or not, <clears throat> and that is um, the garage door. I haven't done it yet because they're expensive. I probably would. It'd be kind of cool to have an automated door that I can open and close, you know, with my voice. Uh, the front door locks. I haven't done that yet either. Mainly because I saw videos in which people, if they can yell loud enough on your front porch, you probably open up your front door. Oh yeah. That's but I do. I think they have mitigations in place for that now. But still, there's fronts that I'm not even willing to go for. But this right here. Um, I don't mind Prime going up because it's a really good value. If you look at the cost of shipping, all you got to do is go shop on Etsy. And you know, when you're dropping, you know, $10, $15 on shipping or even eBay for that matter. Oh, yeah. You quickly go, oh, holy crap. What I'm spending on Prime is it's well worth it in shipping. And then they give you the shows, even if they have ads now, people are losing their minds about that. I get it. It's a great service. This... And I love Alexa. I don't. I don't think I'd spring for it, man. I don't know. Five to ten dollars extra a month. And just if she's doing what I want her to do, which is basically automation of my home. Yeah. And you mentioned it before the call. Their competition is soon <clears throat> with iOS eighteen. ChatGPT oh, yeah. is going to be integrated into Siri. Like, Excuse what's me. the yeah. point? You know, you can, you can have a conversation with your phone. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, that recent announcement by Apple and ChatGPT to form a partnership kind of blows everything out of the water, at least in my opinion. You know, now all these other companies are thinking, wow, that's a huge partnership. What are we going to do to uh, have some competition, competitiveness uh, against them? So Yeah, and it mentions it at the end of the article. Uh, it says here that over the past year, Amazon has been working to overhaul its AI assistant to keep up with the AI chatbots from OpenAI, Google, and Microsoft. Uh, even Apple has gotten to the AI game with an overhauled version of Siri coming to iOS 18. Amazon has already started testing elements of its new AI, Alexa, which allows users to join a wait list by saying, Alexa, let's chat. So they're just trying to get into the game. I don't know. I, I, I think if they start charging for a service that they're already... In my opinion, they're they're a leader, and Alexa is very good at what it does. And they're they're they got a head start. I honestly think if they were to partner with one of those, you know, particular big ones, which really one, two of them, if you look at Microsoft and OpenAI, actually three of them, and Apple, that they're all OpenAI, which is ChatGPT. Google's the only one that has Gemini its own. But if they were to partner and integrate Alexa into one of them. I think that would be smart and then not charge for it. <laughs> That's what I think. Or only up, I, you know, only open it up by like a dollar or two a month. I think that would be more worth it, but it's my two cents. Yeah, All right. I agree. Next. This one's fascinating. Yeah. So, uh, if you've heard about Starlink, they are the satellite internet company by, uh, Elon Musk. They have a new invention or a new uh, product coming down. It's a Starlink Mini. It's for those backpackers and people really out in no man's land, no signal, out in the uh, back 40, as you say. <laughs> it's really cool. So Starlink's been used by military. It's been in the news because of the war in Ukraine. It's, it's supplying uh, connectivity for a lot of remote places. It's really cool. Have you ever been outside at night, Doug? You ever seen the line of Starlink? I have. Yeah. So the first time I saw that, uh, I didn't think aliens or anything. I was going to uh, call my buddy Matt, but oh. then I thought, uh, nah. I, if you did, Matt would not be able to run into the house and put his tinfoil hat on fast enough. Well, he's got one uh, handy. <laughs> he probably pulls it uh, out of his pocket. Pulls it out of his pocket, unfolds it. <laughs> next time we see him, he's going to give some stuff. So. <laughs> we love you, Matt. Anyway, 
Matt is our resident guy. That's you know that meme on the internet uh, where it's the dude from the History Channel. His hair's all messed up, and like he's like, this. he's like, yeah, he's like, Doug. he's like, I'm not saying it's aliens, but, but it's aliens. aliens. Yeah, <laughs> that's so Matt. Anyway, we'll stop hating on him. Uh, We're getting <laughs> we love you, Matt. So we love back you. to this. Uh, like you said, it's being used to uh, power their drones, and the drone warfare over there is just crazy. It's huge, and it's a really cool service. What's really neat about this, they go on to talk about, you see how small it is next to that little puppy dog on the picture, for those of you that are not on camera. This thing can fit in your backpack. It's super flat. You can run it with a battery. Like They mentioned like just an Anaker um you know, one of those Anaker batteries, yeah. you can run it and you can get up to a hundred megabits per second, which is pretty, that's pretty good. Actually. Pretty darn good being in the middle, middle of nowhere. And, um, uh, they have the tweet posted in here and, uh, you know, somebody had posted up there and Musk said, uh, I just set it up right now and I'm writing this post through space. It took less than five minutes, easily carried in my backpack. The product will change the world. I'll admit this is, this is a really cool, uh, product because to be able to have that speed on your back when you're out in the middle of nowhere, this is really cool. Now it did cause uh, Doug and I to go in, and they do talk about it here a little bit. How much does this cost? And they do have a breakdown in there. <clears throat> I was surprised, and I knew it was going to cost a little bit, but holy moly, look at that! One twenty is the residential. This is yeah. uh, unlimited, high speed, low latency, one hundred and twenty dollars a month. Is there, looks like their lowest one, doesn't it? Yeah. I think so. so. The two cents I'll add to that is if it's not HughesNet, it's worth it. HughesNet <laughs> uh, back in the day, my it's not. gosh, terrible. Yeah. They must have had some ancient Chinese satellite that they retrofitted for that. No, no, no. With Hughes, so you got to understand with HughesNet, it, they piggybacked on the technology that DirecTV and Dish were using. The big problem with HughesNet, you got, pretty decent download rate it used you remember you had to plug your phone line into the receiver yeah. that was its upload because they did not on those receivers they didn't have on, on the end of the satellites they didn't have asynchronous bi-directional so they didn't have the ability to, to send your upload to space oh, starlink okay. does i think that's the fundamental difference is that this was designed for that um, and this, and I've seen people play video games over Starlink. Oh, so this man. is this is a different technology. And but the reason why Hughes sucked so much, especially for gaming, yeah. was because your uplink was going over phone line, like fifty six k mode. Oh. Think of it that way. Yeah. I see. I just thought, you know, back before I was wired nerdy, that it's all uh, satellite stuff. Yeah. No, it's that's that's pretty common. Like oh, a lot of people. Well, darn. Now you're looking at five hundred bucks for the actual hardware, which you know. Ain't bad. Kind of an average setup cost for a new yeah. technology, I think. Not bad, but that monthly rate. Now, granted, you can get decent internet anywhere in the world, globally. They they do talk about, they have a roam. Then This is best for if you're moving. So this is the RVs or people that are nomads, funny, campers, 150 a month, so a little bit more. And it looks like unlimited data inland. It's portable. You can pause the service, which is nice. Maybe that's why it's so much you can turn it on, turn it off, based off your travel pattern. And then finally, boats. Best for maritime, emergency response, and mobile businesses. 250 for 50 gig. And that's $250 a month for 50 gig. And then it goes up from there. $1,000 for one terabyte. Now, these have data caps on them. Probably because it's the way that you know, it expands a, a large area. Now, as you're familiar with emergency response, being an officer... What are your thoughts on this, especially remote, if you were an officer, well, on the water, even for that matter? Yeah. Oh, well, I absolutely think it's great. You know, if you say uh, Coast Guard out there in the middle of the ocean and you need to get a phone call out, like Wi-Fi calling or get a message out, I think it'd be great. I think it would also, like, oh, Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. Oh, no, was, I'd say it'd also help with uh, GPS and stuff, I'm sure. Well, I think about the aftermath of hurricanes. Right now, the big thing, we were talking about this before, a lot of sail companies do sell on wheels. They're called cows. Yes. They're, they're trucks, and they have like the antenna on the back. They ratchet it up. They do have to connect it in to some fiber optics somewhere, and they do that where cell phone network has been totally annihilated, and there's a first responders network. Doug, I know you're a part of that, mm -hmm. yeah. right, for your cellular. But this could be a decent alternative for emergencies like that. Oh, absolutely. 
I think the one thing I'm excited about, and I don't know if Starlink kind of goes over, you know, like Africa or these poorer nations, to give them and their schools some internet service for the kids. I have a funny story about that. Uh Uh-oh. That was what I was going to tell you. Okay. So it blew up on the internet, and it it went viral, and it got blown out of proportion. So I want to be clear about this. It started as a a mild thing, and it kind of blew up. But there was an article that said they gave Starlink to uh, a, what were they called? The, the Marado. They were a tribe okay. somewhere in Africa that has either Africa or South America. And they have not, you know, really been in connected with society. And the article stated, or the headline was that they got hooked on porn. Uh Oh, <laughs> that's not, and it got blown up. It went all over Reddit. People, like, Oh my God, you know, this, we got this tribe hooked on porn. That's not necessarily true what it was is the elders were upset there is a kernel of truth in it they were upset because when they gave them starling the younger people of the tribe were exchanging on whatsapp they were exchanging pornographic images that they had gotten from the internet well that's a big deal in their culture because in their culture you don't even kiss in public there's no public displays of affection so it's not that the whole tribe got hooked on porn that was (laughs) but you my point is is this it does definitely bring internet to impoverished areas but it also brings new concepts that we're kind of familiar with in a westernized modern world of what i mean porn's been around for a long time like readily accessible yeah. think about if it's not been what and then what does that mean generationally because you are while you're introducing all this knowledge like at the tip of your fingers what, you're also bringing in um game of thrones <laughs> so, yeah. I'm not saying game of thrones is equal to porn i want to be clear about that more oh, like the right. violence like, even the violence it's not even that you know Think about the violence. So that was well, my funny little story I read this week. Yeah. Think about a, a culture that hasn't uh, seen or heard about history in the last 300 years and trying to ke- play catch up. But you know what? They're really lucky that they get to watch Star Wars for the first time or Disney. Oh, yeah. um, oh I, you know, yeah. Infinity, the whole Infinity Stone tr- trilogy mm. with Marvel. <laughs> be pretty good <laughs> now we're being facetious anyway this is really cool about the backpack thing yeah good for starlink uh they did say in the article they're hoping that the price gets driven down i can kind of see why if it does i can see this really taking off for people this is oh absolutely yeah probably one of you know one of the more positive investments that musk has been doing that's actually making a difference uh in a way i'm not saying that tesla hasn't if that's huge but uh, it's languished because of some issues they've had with quality control, things like that. I think this is more in his wheelhouse. I mean, he's the guy that helped create PayPal, for example, which is more technology based. And so that's why I think he's having better luck with this. Yeah. All right. What else we got here? <clears throat> All right. Oof. Yeah. So this one's the cool. Next one Netflix House. That's the name of it. Netflix House. They are going to open department stores in Dallas and Pennsylvania in 2025. So the way I read this article is they've already set up some uh, themed shops uh, in uh, other areas, you know, for um, the Stranger Things. Yep, yeah. sorry. And uh, some other properties. That would be the easiest way I was trying to think of shows. Well, now they're coming up with a, an entire mall, per se, for a retail shopping center. Yep. And... When I first, I told Doug, when I saw this, I didn't read the article. I glanced at it. I thought, are they opening up movie theaters where you can go and watch Netflix movies? That's not the case. They, they're they going into abandoned malls, and which, you know, thousands and thousands of square feet. And they're flipping mm-hmm. them. And they're stores that are specific to their IP. Stranger Things, Squid Games. They have a lot of IP, man. And so, oh, yeah. Yeah, I th- I think this is great personally. I think it's a really cool idea. Um, if you think about it from a theme standpoint, if you have a family like I know my one daughter, uh, she is crazy about Stranger Things. She did get to do a pop up store when she had visited New York City of a Stranger Things. But now, if you went to a place like Dallas to visit for vacation, this is a cool thing you can take your kids. If, you know, hadn't been before. I think yeah, it's cool. It looks cool. They say uh, there's going to be regularly updated immersive experiences and unique food and drink offerings. So I'm sure themed uh, restaurants and themed little snack bars to their shows that they have. 
Yep, and mentions that the decision to open the first locations in shopping centers, shopping centers would resonate with Stranger Things fans, given that season three of the series prominently featured the 80s themed Starcourt Mall, which was recreated inside a real shopping center. It'd be kind of cool if they recreated scenes like that <laughs> inside of, of this, <laughs> so you can walk through it. I don't know, they may be onto something here. I think it's a really cool idea. Yeah, there's also uh, going to be some statues and sculptures and m- murals on the walls, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, and I like how the article kind of ends. If there's one thing that can save the nation's dying shopping malls, it's statues of terrifying demogorgons out front. <laughs> I like that, too, because they haven't shared a lot of details on this. It's all conceptual drawings, as, as yep. Doug said. So I think this is a cool idea. I'm interested to see where it goes. Hopefully it catches on. I'd go to one. I think it'd be fun. Yeah, I think, I think that, it'd be cool. Good. All right. Oh, the next one. So I'll let you take this one. <laughs> Nintendo does these mini showcases and it's mainly game announcements usually because nintendo isn't as often you know announcing their new switch yet they they don't do that very often they'll they'll sit on that platform as long as possible but people are losing their minds because one particular game that was showcased this past week is a new legend of zelda called echoes of wisdom people are going nuts losing their mind why it's the first time you can play princess zelda which this shows a deviation away from the traditional game series where it was always Link and it was a retelling of pretty much the same story each time. You know, even though they added elements like Ocarina of Time, oh, yeah. Majora's Mask, you know, Breath of the Wild, there's always a different take on it, but it's the same it's relatively the same telling with new elements where this one actually takes a perspective shift and allows you to play uh, Zelda. Because apparently I think that's been asked asked about. The game looks cool though. It's very cartoony. Yeah. Kind of claymation like almost. It does um, look good. I think there's a trailer here. There you go. Well, and you know, for those that uh, aren't really familiar with the series, and I've done it myself very at, at the very beginning, but you always thought Zelda was the person you played because that was the name of the thing. But, I mean, you quickly find out not. Yeah. So I guess my point is to finally have a Zelda title where you play as Zelda. That's kind of cool. It is. A lot of people are really excited about it. And I've got the gameplay playing here. Um, I really like the art style that they've kind of gone with. Mm-hmm. It's very yeah. Not everything has to be like true to life. Uh, yeah, graphics and stuff. You can have some artistic, uh, cartoony, uh, low poly stuff. Yeah, and they show in this that Link goes to save her, and he gets sucked through some kind of a void, and he shoots an arrow, breaks her out, and then now she's on her own and she has to basically save link which is a cool flip um you know what the the art style reminds me of those little play school characters remember those when you were a kid oh i do remember yeah that's what they remind me of it's really cool i i love the uh i don't know they did a really good job just they're showing the map and it looks big and it's cool i like that they kind of they didn't stick with the same art style that they did before with uh the other games so pretty neat i see why people are excited about it it looks good. All right. Next up, <clears throat> Doug, controllers, man. What I, kind of controller do you like to use? Let's start so with that. So I actually have my uh, controller sitting on my desk. I, I'm i just an Xbox guy. I use my little lime green Xbox controller. I have a red one that looks like that. I love the Xbox controller. I do too. It, and it yeah. works great on all the emulators. It does. But speaking of that, there's another company that does awesome. I own one of these. It's n- It might be similar to this one. I'd have to go look at my... Actually, Mine is the SNES Pro something plus. But oh, uh, while he's getting that, the 8 bit do that's the name of the company, the number 8 B I T D O, 8 bit do Pro 2 controller is on sale for as lowest price ever. And I've got to tell you, know, I've owned some 8 bit do controllers. They're very, very nice. They're very easy to connect. Uh, Keith is showing one on his screen now for those watching video. Very nice. So the one that's on sale is a Pro 2. This here is a Pro Plus. Now, I love it. Doug and I have talked about it. If you notice the buttons and sure. the style of it, it's Super Nintendo uh, color mm-hmm. theming. That's why I wanted this one. Um, I love this thing. It is, it's great for retro games. It's, if I don't have my Xbox controller nearby, because I will use that one by default like you, I love this thing. But this is, you know, we wanted to mention this because if you need a new controller, you want to do some retro stuff, this is probably the best you can buy. And it's on sale right now at Amazon. So 
Yeah. And it talks about uh, Hall effect switches, Mm -hmm. which that are switches uh, help to reduce or eliminate stick drift. And for those that don't play video games, if you have the little uh, joysticks, uh, once you play hours and hours and hours, there's a thing called stick drift where you'll start to move left, right, up, down as your controller's starting to break down. So it's good that they're trying to combat that. It's really annoying. The Switch had that problem, the original one. I think they did better with the paddles, but yeah, you would just hold it still. He's right. You wouldn't even be moving. You wouldn't touch it. But on the screen, it's moving. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. It's like a phantom thing. It's annoying. But anyway, these are great. If you have not picked up one, you want to, we wanted to mention that because we like them. Oh, this next next one I'm excited about. I'm let you take it. This was your find. This is good. Yeah. So uh, in my, um, I guess, quest to get an iPhone, I've been getting lots of uh, algorithms on my searches. <laughs> so this came up, but I was excited. The iPhone, the first uh, iPhone game streaming service is bringing tons of retro games. It is called AntStream. It's going to launch on June 27th. It will have about 1,300 retro titles from the Atari, Amiga, Nintendo, all the way to PlayStation 1, I believe. It looks very good. I kind of scrolled through the library of games available, and it looks amazing. The website's cool, too. It's all, like, pixelated... Uh, you know, it's such a cool website. I didn't know this was even a service. And then, didn't they mention the pricing? This is what blew my mind right here. Oh, yeah. Um, it's three nine nine a month or $30 a year. <laughs> Not bad at all. Like I told you, finally a streaming service that I think is properly priced. The the normal price will be $5 per month or $40 a year. Oh, which they're giving you a discount uh, right now. for the launch of the iPhone, yeah. Which is really cool for 30 bucks. So I might do this just because freaking. Well, just think of how many games you get. And if the service works great. Well, I'm also thinking about I can run it on my iPad, the bigger screen, or Apple TV. I wonder. Oh, now see, now see, Doug, you're just, you're killing me on this. I didn't even know this existed. So let's go through some of the games. Like, and I'm sure um, a lot of these, depending on the platform, some people may not be interested. Some of them are pretty retro. They have the 201 Amiga games. Gosh, look at that. Supercars. Uh, the Secret of Monkey Island right there, man. Look at that. for the, the So uh, I'm already sold because I went down this. to my favorite console, the Super, Super Nintendo. Th- oh, I hadn't gotten there yet. Oh, they have arcade too? They've got Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Big time. Oh, Super man. Star Wars Empire Strikes Back. That was a great game. Oh, they got DOS games too, Doug. Look at that. Oh, my God. Full Throttle. Which, by the way... Full throttles on the list for us to do a retro review, and so is the dig. They already very nice. Maybe we can get them to sponsor us. That would be awesome. <laughs> let's let's go look at your Super Nintendo. Oh, they PS One games too. Oh yeah, uh, not like huge ones because you know it's whatever they can afford for the licensing. Yeah, but the SNES. Yeah, you're not right. a lot of PS One games at all. I'm sure the lesser titles that they got the licenses for. Oh, Indiana Jones, crazy. I'm looking at the SNES now, the Super Nintendo. Some decent ones. There's some pretty good titles in there. Pinball, guys. Okay, okay. You know, I played a lot of uh, Sega and Genesis and stuff. We have a friend that uh, loves uh, Sega. He's a diehard Sega guy. It's a good program. I'm it's sure he's going to have a lot of stuff on here, too. I'm going through Sega, what do we have? Super Kickoff. That was pretty good. Yeah, there's not the a lot first. of big titles either. I'm sure there's a licensing <clears throat> issue. So I'm sure, you know, like the biggest ones oftentimes are held on to by like Sega and yeah. or Nintendo. But the big thing with like we've talked about with like Nintendo, they don't release they have their retro service, but they don't they don't release everything. And maybe this is an opportunity for this company to pick up you know, the actual ones that maybe aren't there. I'd like that they go really back to like Amiga and Commodore. This is really cool. And it's decently priced, especially if they keep adding titles as you have the service. Oh, yeah. And it's, I mean, dude, 40 bucks, even at its peak price, that's not bad. You could spend 40 bucks on one brand new game for, yeah. And this is, I mean, uh, this gets you into games you may have never thought of even trying. So it says two games are added each week. That's awesome. That's, That's really cool. cool. Hey, this was a good find, man. So Ant Stream. If you're interested in retro gaming and you don't want to mess with ROMs, this is probably an awesome service for you. That's relatively affordable. So that was a good find there, Doug. Speaking yeah. of video games, it's that time of year. 
I get uh, excited about this. I, very exciting. It's my my chance to collect games I'll never play until I'm retired. <laughs> That's what I look at it as. It's the Steam Summer Sale. They finally announced the, which is soon, man. Today's the 22nd upon the recording of this. They're saying it's going to start June 27th through July 11th. Do you always pick these up? Like, do you get excited about this? I, I know I do. Yeah, but, I do a little bit. I try to have a nice wish list. I do so too. that way I get an email, hey, uh, an item on your wish list is on sale. And then I yeah. go and say, is it time to get this or not? What I do is throughout the year, just like that. First of all, for Christmas, birthday, my default thing is if you get me a Steam card, I'm good. And then I load up the Steam card with credits. And then I build this wish list all the time. Yeah. And then what's funny is I get so excited about it, but then I'll go sit down, like the sale starts, I'll click on my wish list, and then I just start adding things to my wish list, and then I've blown my whole credit, and then now I'm done. So at that point, it's just browsing. Yeah. So I am going to pick up, uh, we talked about this, it's huge on Steam, and it looks chill, but the American Truck Simulator, they have a Euro one too. I think oh, it's yeah. it's only going to be like $4 or something like that. That's been on my wish list for a while. It'll probably go down to like 2 or 3 bucks. Just to get random things I probably normally wouldn't get that I want to try. That's what I love about it. Yeah, but I don't play half of them. I'm just going to be honest. I have a massive Steam library. But now that I know I can stream from my oh, yeah. computer to my Apple TV with the uh, Steam link, that they had, and it works so good, maybe I'll start playing these more. So I'm excited. Yeah. Steam link sale, or the not Steam link, the Steam sales always uh, got me. Yeah, I, I just like have it. to check the bank and then uh, go online. Well, they have really good deals. I will say that. I mean, yep. all and I watch the prices. Like all year long, there will be a game that'll be like forty bucks all year long, and then almost always when this pops up, you can get it for fifty, sometimes seventy percent off or more. You get some really good deals on this. So I'm excited about it. All right, let's get to our main topic. Yeah, are you excited about the summer? I am excited. I'm going to bring up our list here. Now, we're not going to go over everything on the list, mainly because this list and a lot of lists when I was trying to get a summary, it includes everything. We're talking blockbusters. We're going to try to stick to things that people would be more, what's the word I'm looking for? Common, maybe? Yeah. That would be interesting. Because there's some indie films on here, which I'm sure are great. But if that's not your jam, well, don't worry. We're going to try to stick with more of the common things here. All right, window. Ooh, here we go. So as we're scrolling down, the first one that they show is Hitman on Netflix, and I have actually watched this. Oh, did you? I heard good I'm things. I'm a pretty good fan of it. Uh, it's <clears> got <throat> some comedy in it, but I like it. Was it good? Yeah. I would I've definitely heard, recommend it. I've heard good things about it. And so it looks It's got a good. twist to it. So. Okay. Okay. I might check that one out. Is it action? Yep. It's from the School of Rock People and Dazed and Confused, which I like those movies. So. Hmm. Now, the next one, uh, Ghost Light, it's an independent film. I haven't read a lot about it. I read a little bit. It's supposed to be very Romeo and Juliet-ish. So well, let me explain what I mean by that. It's this construction worker that essentially gets, there's a family tragedy. He gets pulled into being a community, in the community theater of Romeo and Juliet. So I don't know, it looks kind of dramatic to me. I don't know. But if you're into indie films, that may not be too bad. Yeah. So some of these I'm going to skip over because they look dumb. I'm not going to skip over this one. Inside, Inside, Inside Out. Inside Out too. Yeah. I love the first one. The first one was great. Uh, yeah. Now, I've talked to someone who watched the second one. It's currently in the theaters now. And they like they it. They said it was okay. They thought the first one was a really good one. And they didn't think it uh, matched it. But I read a, a story about how two of the main voice actors, Bill Hader and somebody else. Oh, I cannot, I can't think of her name. She's on The Office. Um, and either way, they lowballed them. They only offered them like $100,000 to reprise their roles. Oh. So they replaced them. So I That's thought that was right. kind of like, yeah. yeah. Where I think Amy Poehler, which who I do agree is the main character. They like paid her, you know, like a, over like $10 million. It was stupid. Yeah. So I don't know. I thought that was kind of an odd article that I read, but I love the concept of this. I think it may be a victim of its own circumstance because mm. it's hard when something's so good. Sometimes the second one isn't as good. And you can't always say that about Pixar, though. I mean, look at like Monsters Inc., for example. Oh, that yeah. It's huge. Yeah. yeah. Or Toy Story <laughs> 4. I think there's four of them. Four right. of them. Yeah. So definitely I'll check this out. I think it looks good. This next one. I think look pretty interesting. It is called 
the Biker's Ride. It'll be June 21st. It's about a 1960s motorcycle gang starring Austin Butler. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I wasn't not I wasn't a fan of Austin Butler, but I'm slowly becoming one. Um, I watched Dune 2 recently, and I thought he did so good. I saw Elvis, oh, yeah. and I thought he was amazing at Elvis. I enjoyed it. It was very well done. Um, then I see him in Dune 2, like it, and then he's in this as well. And it looks it looks great. And he's got Tom, Tom Hardy. Hardy. Yeah, yeah, Tom Hardy's in it. I, I love the idea. 1960s, uh, you know, it's, it's got some, some, I think Norm, it's Norman Reedus in this? Or is it, it says it's Michael Shannon, which I love Michael uh, Shannon too. Yeah. He played, for those who don't know, Zod in the last Superman. So I think it looks good. I love the time period it too. It looks good, yeah. 1960s bikers. So I'm going to watch this. This looks really, really good. Yep. Now, I think this is a theatrical release. I don't think it's like a Netflix or anything. So I believe it is. Yeah. It is. It says it there. So I may wait. <laughs> Some of these I wait till it hits streaming. <laughs> I, know, yeah. I just said I love theaters, but I want to save you know, what I'm going to. I'm it is over. a little expensive to go to the theater anymore. It so. is. Now, Apple TV has something called Fancy Dance. This looks very indie. And this is a woman caring for her young niece on a Native American reservation after her sister goes missing. That might be pretty good. Very dramatic. Now, this is the same actress who played in... Killers of the Flower Moon. Yes, thank you. Yeah. She did a very good job, I thought. Now, kudos to Apple. They do really good on their content. Like, Severance. We talked about that recently. So, oh, it's coming back. And yeah. Silo. Yep. And uh, they, a couple of So others. many yeah. of them. Yeah. So yeah. this may be worth seeing, for sure. I'd see it just because it's Apple. Now, this next one I don't know about. It's from the same creators of... There was a movie that swept a lot of awards called Poor Things, uh, which I heard was really weird. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't know much about this, but they did say that the guy that creates these, it's indie, he's got a weird satirical like, deadpan humor about him. Now, it's got William Dafoe in it. It's got a lot of really good people in it. I just, I don't know how it would it be. It does look strange. Yeah, it looks weird. But I think that's like the MO of this director, if you ever saw. Yeah, director of four things. He does he does odd things. So I don't know what this will be like. They, and of course, they don't tell you the story, which sometimes is, uh, it's kind of an indication that there's, that the story may be hard to explain. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, definitely. I don't know about this one. I'll have to wait on reviews. Now, this next one, I love the premise of this. It it looks indie also because it's by Magnolia, which they're known for independent film. This is about an old lady. It's called Thelma. It's in, it says here, June 21. And it says, this old lady is duped by phone scammers in the opening reel. And it sets off a mission impossible across Los Angeles for her to get her money back. And she enlists the aides and an electric scooter of an old pal and runs uh, rings around her frantic daughter who's played by Parker Posey and mm -hmm. matches wits with the scammer who's Malcolm McDowell. I love Malcolm McDowell. That's so an under, under, let's see, an understated riot. That's arguably the most Sundance type film, like little miss sunshine. This looks great. I, I love the premise too. It, yeah, it seems good, you know, cause the scammers shame on them, but to show her, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of comedy trying to get back at them. I mean, <laughs> She's on she's a scooter. She's riding a scooter through the uh, nursing home hallway she's got her, there. Got her, got her best friend, old man in the back. She goes oh, and gets yeah. a gun. <laughs> this one, nice. I would totally. This is like my kind of movie. Yeah. I think this is great. It's like a geriatric John Wick. That's what I hope it is. <laughs> now, we've got some exciting stuff coming up. Uh, the next one is oh. Horizon. Uh, and Kevin Costner is playing in part one, part two. I believe there's a part three. But so. uh, he is so good at westerns, you know, all the way back to uh, Dances with Wolves. Tombstone. Uh, he was in uh, Tombstone. Was he in Tombstone? The, uh, no, I don't think he was. What am I thinking of then? Uh, he was in Yellowstone. No, I'm thinking 90s, man. Okay. But uh, he, they recently showed this at the Cannes Film Festival. I think he got a standing ovation. I've seen the trailer. Uh, we're kind of watching it here now. It looks amazing. And like You're I said, right. he's always done a great uh, Western part. You're right. He was not in Tombstone. I am thinking wider. Oh, okay. That's what I'm I saying. Tombstone's a heck of a movie. They came They came out similar times, to be fair. Yeah. I always got Tombstone and wider mixed up. But no, we saw the trailer for this when we went to go see Dune 2. And yep. I, I love Westerns. And you don't see them as much anymore. It looks awesome. And I think it's an interesting 
uh, we were talking about movies and getting people back and how they're doing stuff different. This is an interesting take. Now, this was shot consecutively, so it's not like you got to wait for part one, wait a year. I believe they're going to release one. Uh, June 28th, one, June 28th. August 16th. Yep. Well, that makes you come back. Isn't that a really cool concept? Which, if you think that about it. That might catch on. Well, they're already doing that with, they already film Netflix movies that way, right? Like back yeah. to back to back or, or TV shows. And they're about an hour long. If you were to do that exact same thing, but just make them consistent theatrical releases, that would bring people back. I think this is not only a really good Western, I think it's a new format that actually could show a different way to to present things and release at the movie theaters, like consecutive release Mm -hmm. just on months. Technically, they probably could have done that with some of the other movies. Like remember Matrix and Lord of the Rings, they filmed them straight through. Yeah. But they they had it so long. A year. Yeah. What if they did this? You wait two months, here's part two. The next two months, part three. They could have, you know, done it. I think this is great. I'm excited about it. Well, you talk about that. It got frustrating there for a while because someone invented the part one, part two. Uh, I remember specifically Harry Potter. So you get to what Deathly Hallows, part one, part two. It's like, oh, yep. you're sitting in a the movie theater and it's. You know, it's going to be a cliffhanger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because you know there's a part two. You're like, and they're not going to resolve So I'm kind of glad that's gone, but I get like releasing it uh, a month later, two months yeah. later. That sounds amazing. Yeah. It looks great. I'm excited about it. I'll definitely check it out. Yeah. Oh, it's got, hey, hey, that's the guy I met right there. Yeah. He played uh, Yondu. Yeah. In uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Exactly. I know. He's... See, it's going to be a great movie. This is great. Anyway. Uh, Next this... one I'm super excited for. This is probably one of my favorite. This should be the blockbuster of summer, I think. I think so, too. I love all of these. Quiet Place, but it's a prequel. So Quiet Place was written and directed by John Krasinski, who played Jim on The Office. His He's wife, done a great job. His wife, Emily Blunt, is the main star. These movies are excellent if you haven't seen them. They yep. top tier, and it's not... Sometimes they market them as almost horror-like. I would say they're more sci-fi thriller. And I love them. Like, if this was a novel, I would read... This is so in my wheelhouse of interest. And this looks great. And this has, and I always mess up her place, uh, her name, Lupita Nyong'o. I don't know if I say that right, but Lupita was in Us, Jordan Peele's mm-hmm. Us. Yep. She was also in an independent film that my wife and I love. Where, and if you haven't seen I'll have to go find it. She plays a kindergarten teacher, and a zombie apocalypse happens. And it's very gory, but she basically is dealing with the zombies while trying to keep the kids happy and not let them know what's going on. It's, and it's funny. Little it's, monsters? Uh, that's it. That's it. It's great. She is I awesome. I haven't seen that. I'm adding that now. So. Oh, it's so good. My wife and I watched it just on a whim, and we loved it. She's amazing in it. It's a great story. Yeah. It's hilarious. It's funny. It's out there, but she's great. So I am. this is my movie that I'm most excited for this summer. Now, the one thing of concern it says is John Krasinski did step back from directing and writing the screenplay for this, but I think as long as they use him as the inspiration – for uh, the his, two Quiet Place movies, yeah. I think it still will be good. It's his universe, so I yeah. would bet money that she that he probably was consulted on at least from a producer standpoint. Yeah. So I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> and this next one, I'm so excited for. Oh yeah, Beverly Hills Cop, yeah. dude! I loved all of these movies, and I watched this trailer. It is even if the movie's bad, it's on Netflix, so it, it has so much nostalgia everybody's back and i forgot like pretty much everyone's alive for the most part yeah all of them it looks so good it is i'm excited about this i'm gonna definitely watch this because these were probably some of my my absolute favorite i mean they have um bronson pincho he comes back he has he's that crazy guy in the art gallery who plays sergey his friend i love that it's uh joseph gordon levett is the young guy in this with kevin bacon Joseph Gordon Levett, I haven't seen him in a lot of stuff, and I love him in just about everything he does. So I'm I'm stoked about this, and we haven't seen Eddie Murphy in a while, especially in an action movie. So I'm excited. I love these, and they guess what? The Axel Foley song's in it. Dun, you know, dun, I can. Dun, 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 yeah, dun, dun, dun. I was about to do. It. <laughs> That's one song that just has stayed with me forever. I've had it as my ringtone at one oh, point yeah. before. So I own the soundtrack. Catchy. Uh, to this just for that song and That's awesome. i love this movie it, it's so awesome so i'm excited about this this will be really good all right i didn't know about this one this is 
Fly Me to the Moon. It's a space rom-com. Uh, and it says that for this project. Uh, okay, now guy. get your tin hat out. Okay. Because I've seen the trailer for the. This I have is, not. Tell me about it. If the you, you, moon you launch doesn't work, we're going to film a backup of it. So, mm. was the moon landing real? So, that's what this is about. So, this so, has a ah. comedic spin on the uh, moon landing, and they filmed it. So And it's Apple. So, it's probably pretty good. It's going to be a part of it. It's got some good actors in it. Channing Tatum. Uh, Scarlett Ray Johansson. Romano. I mean, mm-hmm. big time. So, the idea behind this, it looks funny. If they don't make it to the moon, they're going to film it. Wow. Okay. Interesting. I'll definitely watch this. This looks really good. Oh, Woody Harrelson. Great. All right. Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to skip through that one because there's a Twister. There's a, there's well, that's a what bunch I want to do. Independent to. films. Yeah. yeah. Let's go to Twister. <laughs> so we had this talk last night between my wife and my daughters. They are excited about this. I am yeah. not so much excited about it. Um, they are excited, which we'll go see it probably. To me, it looks shot for shot in like the old 90s version, which yeah. the old 90s version. Bill Paxson. Come on. You can't, can't do, do better. It without him. You can't do better than Bill. And Helen Hunt, uh, but you know, but I'm old, like you said, we're getting old. It's nostalgia. Maybe this is great. Uh, I don't know. But Doug, you and I live in a zone with tornadoes. That's the other thing too. We know, yeah, <laughs> really what they're like. You know, luckily I've never seen one. I, mm-hmm. I would like to see one from a distance. Uh, hopefully, it doesn't damage anything. But uh, this definitely gets all the Midwesterners in the country to, uh, <laughs> ooh, tornado. It does, and it, the lead actor, I believe, the same guy that was in the Hitman movie you just talked about. I believe it is, yeah. It looks like it. And he was also in uh, Maverick? Glenn Powell, I believe. So, I wonder if they're going to have the cow flying through the air. Uh, I don't know. So, the funny thing was, the first uh, poster they released before any trailers were made was, it had two twisters, like, uh, and if you remember in the first movie, they had the twins in the water. Mm-hmm. Well, they have two twisters in this one, so it's like... Well, this one's twisters, plural, and the first yes. one was twister, so you gotta add another singular. One. Now, uh, I saw in the preview, they're still trying to release the... Is it Dorothy? The little contraption in the back of the truck yes, with the Yes, they are. And they're driving a Dodge Ram again, but it was red. Now it's yeah. white. And I still don't understand how Dodge keeps their, their trucks. I, how many people think bought Dodge Rams just thinking that they would stay grounded in the middle of a tornado? <laughs> right. Yeah, a barn is going I by mean, you. What a great marketing uh, thing! Though. It is. They paid a lot of money. I always laughed. A barn is going by you in the but air. But your Dodge truck. But your Dodge on truck the... is on the ground. Yeah, it's so ridiculous. Uh, I'm sure I'll watch it. <laughs> okay, now this is second. Now, don't get me wrong. I said Quiet Place was my number one. This is probably my number two, and and I'm only going to explain. This is Deadpool Wolverine. The reason why it's my number two is. Um, I and I won't spoil anything. I, I know about the storyline. I know exactly what they're doing because I own the comics, and so I'm a, I'm a bit ruined on it. I think it's gonna be awesome. It's a great storyline, but I'm not as excited about it personally, only because I know what's gonna happen in this story. I know it beat by beat. I can tell by the trailer. I know exactly what gonna do. So in a way, I'm kind of uh, I don't know. I kind of ruined on it since I'm a comic book reader. So I'll leave it at that. I won't tell you. <laughs> But it's going to be good because it's Ryan Reynolds and they brought Hugh Jackman back, of course. Oh, well, yeah. And just Deadpool goes away from the normal superhero movie mm-hmm. with uh, innuendos, dirty scenes, the amount of blood and gore and everything. It's, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. It'll be good. To me, I'm personally just not as excited because I know, like, I'm going to bite my tongue. <laughs> I don't want to give anything away to anybody. I don't want to ruin the movie. I don't want to ruin oh, your summer. There you go. But they are, do have a, they have a popcorn bucket after the Dune thing. We just talked about this recently. Oh that. my gosh! Yes, it's like in it's isn't it the shape of their heads and the popcorn comes out of their mouths? That's yeah, I think so. <laughs> so lewd. <laughs> now the there was a popcorn bucket. We're going to have a side conversation. There was a good one coming up. I thought I've seen a few concepts, but this is oh, the one. The that's uh, which one is it? Regal Theaters is uh, promoting it. It's for Ghostbusters. Oh. Yeah, that was the. It looks like ghost a ghost trap. trap. Yeah, yeah, we talked about that. Yeah. Okay. You see this theme now with all these popcorn buckets, which is kind of cool. Maybe again, another way to get people back in the theaters. Yeah. You know, something collectible. Uh, you know, when I always go to a football game or a Cardinals game, you know, I get a souvenir cup. Yeah. Or a bobblehead. For one, a, I don't yeah. like buying uh, dishes, so now I have free dishware. <laughs> yeah. I will say my favorite gag in this trailer is they have. 
Ant Man, who's he's giant, and his 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 mask opens up, and he's a skull. He's dead, and then he says, "Oh, Paul Rudd finally aged." <laughs> I love the uh, little joke there. That's for funny. <laughs> All right, uh, Danny, I'm trying to I think go that through about here. wraps it up. I think so too. Most of them that they had left were a lot of independent films we yeah. don't know a lot about. Uh, so yeah, and some foreign films down there. Yeah, we're at the top of our time anyway. So this was fun, man. Like a lot to look yeah. forward to this summer. We got Steam Summer Sale. We got some awesome movies. I think that's it, man. I think we're gonna close this bad boy out. Bring us home. Yeah, I uh, I'll definitely work on my hair next time. But uh, <laughs> flock of series, seagulls, you got yeah. the flock of seagulls. <laughs> in all seriousness we really appreciate everybody listening you know we do this because we love talking about movies video games all things wired nerdy and uh wired not nerdy you know we get off topic a lot but we love it we're glad you guys are listening check us out on youtube apple podcast all those other places check out our store and thanks yeah thank you these are all conversations doug and i would be having even if we weren't recording them so we're just kind of pulling the curtain back letting you in on it so absolutely we, we appreciate you being here everybody have an awesome week we will see you next time and take care see ya